I'm Rebecca Blackwell, and welcome to City, your TV video travel show. Join us this half hour as we discover the gateway to Europe, Holland. Journey with us through its rings of canals, viewing Amsterdam's tree-lined streets along the river Amstel, with centuries-old mansions and colorful canal houses along its banks and cobblestone streets. Amsterdam's many bridges open to sailboats and barges as they push their way along the canal maze, gliding out to sea. One of the world's most hospitable cities, Amsterdam's Golden Tulip Barbizon Center Hotel will make you feel right at home in the heart of the city. Bicycles outnumber cars two to one, so if you want to join the Dutch in their favorite transportation, rent a bike. Looking back in time as you begin your adventure in Holland by boat, sailing on day trips or more extended excursions, or on a canal cruise through the canals and bridges of Amsterdam. Amsterdam is the site of many historic sites including the Anne Frank House. We'll take you south of Amsterdam to the stately city of diplomats and lively seaside resort, The Hague, an elegant city and setting for Holland's parliament. A visit to The Hague undoubtedly means a trip to the nearby waterfront, dominated by the great domed Kurhaus Hotel designated a national monument and classic year-round resort. Being a very compact country, it's easy to drive only one hour from Amsterdam to Rotterdam, the world's largest port, currently in the midst of building Holland's and Europe's most futuristic city. There are many manufacturers who claim to make porcelain from Delft, but we are going to visit the genuine Royal Porcelain Factory that has a special signature identifying it as the authentic noble blue pattern china that bears its name. Not all pieces are blue. Delft also produces new limited editions designed by local Dutch artists. Stay with us now for your visit to Holland. As you already know, we've been presenting springtime in Holland, and now we're in Holland. Yes, we <laughs> and we're here at, in uh, Amsterdam, the beautiful city of Amsterdam, and we're with Marijke Schreiner, and she is the deputy manager here at the Golden Tulip Barbizon Center. We love your hotel, Marijke. It's Thank so you. comfortable and homey. Uh, please tell us what some of your best features are, and of course, Amsterdam is such a beautiful city. Yes, it is. It's a very beautiful city. It's the capital of Holland, uh, the Netherlands, what it's called. And uh, our hotel, the Barbizon Center, Golden Tulip Barbizon Center, is right in the middle of this uh, beautiful city with a lot of canals, and you can make beautiful boat rides. Um, the Barbizon Center Hotel has 239 rooms. When you're outside, it doesn't look that big, but it's, it's a big hotel for Amsterdam. Uh, and um, we have uh, suites and, uh, of course, different type of king-size and twin-size rooms and some family rooms as well. Um, in the hotel, we have a nice restaurant, uh, French cuisine, and uh, the Café Barbizon, a nice coffee shop, which is open from 10 in the morning till uh, 11 at night. Of course, a bar and lounge with live piano music and hairdresser, beauty parlor, fitness center. So everything is there for the pleasure and business. Well, I think, of course, one of the things that's so special about the Golden Tulip Barbizon Center is that it is a center. It's right in the center of Amsterdam, and right the there's center. so much to see here. We thought maybe you'd tell us some of the things yes. we can see right from your doorsteps. Yes, we're very proud of our location because in this center, and it's called the Leidseplein, and Plein is the Dutch word for square, this is really the, the place to go to at night for the nightlife, the bars, the nice restaurants, all types of food, from fast food till 
to uh, Indian food and Chinese and Indonesian and Latin American, so everything is there. But as well, the nice bars, the brown cafes, what we call it, shops. Shopping is very popular in this uh, area. And um, as well, the Van Gogh Museum, which is only on five minutes walking. And of course, the canals. So it's just right in the middle of it all. It's right in the middle of it all, yeah. You, whatever you like and whatever you want to do here, it's there. And you don't need a taxi, you don't need a bus or train or tram, what we have here, you've seen it. You can just walk. It's so easy to get yourself booked in, too, because you can contact your airline that you're planning to travel yes. with. Well, you can tell us more about that. For booking, making reservations in our hotel, of course, you can uh, dial the toll-free number and um, it's in the United States, of course, and we are linked with a lot of reservation systems, so uh, we are easy to reach, yes. And well worth it, and we have really enjoyed being here. It is very homey, delicious breakfast. You'll love the food. Breakfast, yes. <laughs> and uh, such a pleasure to meet you, and it's wonderful to be in Amsterdam. Thank you. Well, it was wonderful to have you here. I hope you had a nice time as well. We've just arrived at what is the gateway to Europe. We're in Amsterdam at Schiphol Airport, and we are visiting Thrifty Car Rental. And we're here with the general manager, which we want to introduce you to, Mr. John Bosman. And, John, everybody in the United States knows the name Thrifty, and uh, we're very loyal. We love Thrifty, and uh, we'd like to find out what you're doing over here so that we can use Thrifty when we go on our tour through Europe. Right. Well, we, uh, in, uh, in Schiphol, we have an off-airport uh, facility, that means that we will meet all the customers um, right at the airport with our courtesy bus. We'll uh, pick them up and uh, take them down to our station, which is about five minutes away from the airport. So that is that is really fast. We um, we have a fleet which is uh, designed to meet all the customers' demands. We have mini buses, we have air-conditioned cars, we have automatics, manuals, whatever you like. So it is very easy to rent from us. Apart from that, of course, because we are not on the airport, our prices are much more attractive than the big boys who are right there and have to charge you uh, the full whack, as they say. I think you just said something that's going to touch our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> and if it helps our pocketbooks, we'll love that, too. But we all know the name Thrifty, and, and uh, it's, it's a name that we want to stick with. When, and I think as you're starting your whole trip through Europe, this is the place to come. Absolutely. It's easy to, uh, to book a car with us. You, uh, you call the 0800 number of uh, Thrifty in the States, in Tulsa, and they will gladly make the reservation for you, and uh, they will give you all the instructions of where to find us and uh, where the meeting point is where uh, we will pick you up. Well, I think you're going to be seeing a thrifty car in front of some major beautiful hotels on this particular show, and, uh, and we thank you very much for talking with us today about thrifty. It's been our pleasure. Thank you. You're welcome. Dining in Amsterdam offers many choices in food, probably more than any other European city. We found a wonderful wood-paneled 17th century restaurant specializing in traditional Dutch dishes. In English, it's called the Five Flies. Prepare for a romantic candlelit table experience in a series of five completely separate rooms. And enjoy a sampling of Dutch cuisine that you won't forget. Some traditional plates may include smoked eel, raw herring, asparagus, oysters, and mussels. Another must in Amsterdam eating establishments is Indonesian food, quite exotic if you haven't already tried it. On the same street as the Golden Tulip Barbizon Center, you will find the Rodden Moss of Amsterdam, one of a high-end chain of three restaurants located throughout Holland. This meal can only be described as sumptuous, referred to as the rice table, which aside from the rice, may include over 30 different dishes. The Dutch have been devouring Indonesian cooking for centuries, since the first trading ships established routes to the Far East. When you're in Amsterdam and want to experience something quite different, do what the Dutch do and try Indonesian.
What you're seeing right now are the original vats that the Grolsch Beer Brewery Factory has, and they've had them for 300 years. They've been here making beer. And we are here with the plant manager in Holland at the Grolsch Beer Brewery. And, Nico, we welcome you to our show, City. How are you? Hello. I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> we are here today to learn exactly how the Grolsch beer is uh, what makes it so popular in America and to get an idea of what your packaging is like. And so tell us about your taste. Uh, our beer has a very unique taste. It's brewed here in Grunlo for more than 300 years and it is a very unique beer because of the fresh water we use. We have our own wells and uh, we buy very special hops and malts and together with the craftsmanship of our brewers that makes our beer very unique in its taste and quality. You know, speaking of the uh, look of your bottle, it's, it's easy to recognize, and I know you've worked hard on that and marketing and making sure that Grolsch is recognizable, and why don't you describe how it all gets bottled and what it looks like? Uh, we are also uh, famous because of our special packaging of beer. We have this unique swing top bottle, a very old bottle, more than 100 years old, and you see this beautiful green glass with a, a porcelain stopper on it. We call it the swing top bottle or flip top bottle. I think Americans love that. They love to flip it open. Well, listen, we, uh, we know that you've been growing and there's a big demand for Grolsch in America. And uh, I know that you have headquarters there. And uh, tell us about that. Uh, we are more than 15 years on the American market now. And uh, we have an, an own sales office in Atlanta. And we see after 15 years that the market demands lots of beer and we are growing and growing, especially in the west of the United States. We are going to take you on a little closer look at the Grolsch Beer Factory and we're about to go now and watch the bottling process. So thank you very much. You're welcome. We're in the very famous Delft, and we're at the Delft Ware, Royal Delft Ware, and Astrid is here, and Astrid, we're so anxious to learn everything we can about Delft Ware, when it started, pieces that you have, how valuable they all are. Yes, well, we are the oldest factory, we're from 1653, and in the 17th century there were another 30 manufacturers like ours. Unfortunately, they all disappeared, and we're the only one who survived all those years. I should say fortunately. <laughs> <laughs> well, they all disappeared, yeah, well. <laughs> um, well, the, we are still making the traditional Delft blue entirely hand-painted, um, not an imitation one, uh, which unfortunately is 99% of the Delft wear pieces you can see. Uh, you're standing right now, you're standing in our garden, and uh, we used to make building ceramics. You can see some nice examples of the building ceramics over here, and uh, they are from uh, the 1900s, and the gallery you will see later on is a gallery which is made for the exhibition in Paris, and we won the first prize of it. Some of your pieces date back to the very beginning, and we will be seeing one of those. We'd like you to describe some of the newer pieces, though, that you do on a limited basis. Yes, we have uh, old pieces, which are not for sale, of course. They are in our museum. And every year we have a modern collection. This year we have a modern collection of 20 famous Dutch artists who created something in our name, the Royal Delver Manufactory, and they are made a limited series. So it's a really uh, investment if you buy something like that because it will never come back again. Well, Astrid, we're enjoying being here at Delft, Royal Delft Ware, and it's uh, a trip that you have to make when you're in Holland down to Delft, and the city itself is magnificent. Yes, it's a very old city. It has, has still its traditional canals, which is very famous for Holland, and it's proved that it's a very ancient city. Well, thank you very much. Okay, Rebecca, here you see how our painters work. Uh, we have 30 painters, and the Delft blue is painted, as you can see, with black paint. The black paint contains cobalt oxide, and when it goes in the kiln, there's a chemical reaction of the cobalt oxide, which gives the blue color. You see that everything, uh, what you see, is entirely hand-painted, and that is uh, what makes the piece uh, really valuable uh, for people to buy.
Boyd Stanhouse is joining us now on City as we are sitting here in the old part of Rotterdam, Holland. And uh, Lloyd is a city representative who's going to tell us uh, as much as you can in this short time we have. I would like to, <laughs> yes, please. Uh, right now we're sitting in uh, the old section of Rotterdam called the Delfts Haven area. Um, this area is rather famous because in the year 1620, uh, the Pilgrim Fathers, well known in America also, I think, left from this place to England and from there they left on the speedwell to America. Uh, this area um, is rather uh, popular in Holland and in Rotterdam because of, th of the nice surroundings. You can sit here very quietly, enjoy a drink or a meal and uh, enjoy the, the nice sights that you have over there because on, your back, on the back you see uh, the harbor area that's modern city and over here is the old part of the city so you've got old and new together well we are going to have to talk about the new because Rotterdam is the city of the future here in Holland and you have so many new things going on partly because some of it was damaged from the war is that correct that's correct yes because in, uh, in 1940 uh, the Germans bombed a large part of Rotterdam and therefore we had the opportunity to start building the city all over again and in Holland and in Europe, Rotterdam is rather renowned for its architecture. And that's why we are in Holland called the city of the future. Because although we think of the past and look back at the past, we also look into the future and we try to build as modern things as possible. Well, you have a lot of business opportunities over here and you have all this new building going on. Why don't we describe some of your new bridges and buildings and hotels and, and uh, everything that people can come and look for? Okay. Well, Rotterdam is a great city to do business uh, in, in every way because uh, there are several organizations uh, that uh, try and help the, the new business people to come over here, but I won't uh, get into that. Um, we have rather uh, a lot of hotels in, 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 in Rotterdam. Um, one of them is the Hotel New York, which we're going to see later on. Uh, from there, uh, it, it's, it's really something in the past also, because it's the former headquarter of the Holland America Line, and uh, they, transfor they transformed that into a, a hotel and a restaurant, and from there the people left in, in the uh, in the last part of the uh, 19th century and in the early part of the 20th century for the new world. How about your new bridge that you have going in? Um, when will it be finished? The new bridge will be finished by 1996 and we built it especially for the development of uh, the new city part which is called the Kop van Zuid. It's going to be a new business district, the Kop van Zuid. Uh, on the one hand, and on the other hand, there will be place for uh, recreational facilities and things like that. We didn't want to make the same mistake they made in, in, in the London Docklands, where they first built a new city part, and then they thought afterwards, oh, we have to build a new infrastructure for, uh, for uh, um, public transportation and cars and things like that. Over here we do it the other way around. First we build a new infrastructure of which the new bridge is a part and afterwards we develop the new city part. Well it sounds like a pretty exciting city really on the move and one that's very close to Am Amsterdam and The Hague and it's not far to get down here to Rotterdam and uh, it's, uh, it's something that should be on their l everybody's list. I think so because uh, uh, Rotterdam is called Mainport Europe uh, that is, uh, they are very important for the Dutch economy. I think 10% of the gross national product is uh, made in Rotterdam. Uh, but it has also nice things to offer for, for, for tourists and people who want to combine both pleasure and business. Exactly, and there's many of those that are watching right now, and we're very pleased that we're here in Rotterdam, and we thank you, Lloyd, and, and thank you for showing us Rotterdam. Thank you. Bye-bye. We're visiting now just south of Amsterdam in the Hague area, and we have Sandra Lurison here, who is the public relations director for the Kurhaus Hotel. And it's so beautiful, Sandra, and I know it's a historic landmark. Tell us about it today and some of its history. 
Well, the first beginning of the Kur House dates back to 1818 when it was first built as a little wooden bathing house. Now, the building, as you can see it today, was built in 1887, which is quite a long time ago. And it currently houses 231 rooms, 10 suites, which are absolutely perfectly suited for receiving dignitaries, heads of state, captains of industry. We have a lot of those guests coming over, but then again, it's also very well suited for family stays. I have noticed all the dignitaries arriving while I've been here, and of course we are right be by the Hague, and, and there is a lot of activity right now, but you've got the ocean here and uh, all the surrounding activities. Yes, we do, and I think that's one of the benefits of being both close to a government center, which of course the Hague is, and then Scheveningen being a beach resort. I was hoping you would say that name. <laughs> Uh, how would you uh, sum it up to our viewers out there in, in terms of getting them out of Amsterdam and down in this area? Why don't we just describe some of the sites in the whole area and, and to stay at your lovely hotel? Basically, The Hague is a place that has class, class and style. I mean, I'm not saying Amsterdam has it, but The Hague definitely has more of it. It's a diplomatic center of Holland. Um, you find places, buildings like the Courthouse Hotel all over town. There's the Peace Palace, the International Court of Justice. There's a lot of sports available all around the hotel, downtown The Hague as well. There's plenty of museums. There is just so much you can do. It offers a great diversity from Amsterdam. Sandra, I've noticed a lot of the fun here at the Courthouse Hotel is the food. <laughs> We've enjoyed it. Why don't you describe your eating facilities? We have two restaurants here at the Queer House Hotel. One is the restaurant Kandinsky, the a la carte restaurant, and the other one is absolutely the centerpiece of our hotel. It is called the Corzal and is still the only original part of the hotel. It, um, it has beautiful, beautiful paintings on the ceiling which were painted in 1904 by a Belgian painter within one month. But I have to say, he was helped by 30 of his students, so I think that makes up for a little bit of the time. Um, it features buffet breakfast, lunch, dinner, a lot of um, concerts are taking place there, events, parties, as big as you can imagine them, they can all take place here at the, Cor at the Corzal restaurant. Well, you have to visit a hotel of this uh, stature to be able to see those original paintings and to get that feeling that you can't find in the modern hotels modern meaning just built recently not at all it has um, it has its own atmosphere actually and I don't think you can copy that however nice a new hotel you're gonna build it's just breathing it's its history I feel thank you very much Sandra <laughs> we're here on the coastline at the Hague and we're enjoying a wonderful place that we know you will want to come to when you get to the Hague it's called Oscars we've invited the owners to tell us all about it so that you'll know about it and we have Ast Astrid and Edwin who are the owners here and welcome to city it's so nice to be here at Oscars Thank you very much. We're hoping that you can tell us everything you do here because it's just everything from the beach to the pool, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, Edwin, take it away. <laughs> okay. Well, Oscars in Scheveningen, uh, that's the place what we build actually. We have a swimming pool. We try to uh, enjoy the people with good weather and bad weather. Uh, what we have to do is uh, we rent push bikes, uh, horse riding. Down on the beach, we have um, water sports facilities with catamarans, uh, water skiing, etc. Actually, and what we try to do is people come at eight o'clock. We have our own parking place. People, because it's very hard here in Scheveningen to get a car parking place, well, we have it. The people coming here, they have a breakfast at eight. They can have a lunch. They can have dinner and they can be enjoyed. We have a kids club also, so everyone takes his kids with, with them and then they try to make a nice day. I think one of the things that we want to point out here uh, that we didn't say when I did the opening is that you have the only sort of outdoor swimming pool that's, that's not indoor swimming pool, sauna kind of thing, and, it's, and the, you have the beach as well. Thank you. And now, a new idea for vacation fun in Holland. Barge sailing. Watch. We were aboard the Juliana the other day, and that is a, a luxury barge, which is uh, going through the canals and under the bridges as they open and unfold. And Well, why don't you tell us about the Juliana? Well, the Juliana, in fact, is, uh, we think, one of our finest ships uh, we can offer. We organize uh, tours mainly on the inland waterways in Holland, on the small canals and rivers. Um, 
Juliana has uh, well very good accommodation uh, has cabins for two people double cabins also single cabins there's air conditioning all over the ship um, tours that are scheduled every year are for example the tulip tours in spring uh, there are some city and culture tours but also uh, special interest tours like beer cruises uh, a trip from Holland to Belgium is possible Dix Pisano from the pavilion stores tells us now about jet fresh red tomatoes flown in direct from Holland. When you think of Holland, of course you're going to be thinking of beautiful canals and flowers, but are you thinking of beautiful tomatoes? And we know that Dick Spazano, who is the vice president of pavilions uh, in, in the uh, produce and floral department, is thinking of tomatoes. <laughs> Dick, we've invited you today to tell us about the tomatoes from Holland. Well, thank you. Well, when you think of Holland, you think of a lot of things, but one of the things we think of is they do a great job on flowers and produce. And one of the things they're really noted for is their tomatoes. And these tomatoes are what we call tomatoes on the vine. And they are picked ripe. And that's the only way they can pick them is ripe. And they pick them the total vine. So when you go into your Vaughn's Art Pavilion and you see them, that's how they'll be. They're never cheap, but they're worth every penny because they eat like an old-fashioned backyard tomato. And what we try to do at uh, Vaughn's and Pavilions is to look for those type of items where we can be first on the marketplace, get something that eats awfully, awfully good, and bring it into our stores, both Vaughn's and Pavilions, and offer it to our customers. And Holland allows us to do that with their great products. They have other great products also with the colored uh, peppers, red, orange, black, white, and they have great flavors also. And we air freight all of those products into LAX, and then we truck it over to our stores. And uh, we thank you for this opportunity. Well, I just think they're great. I've tried them, and I'm, I'm glad we did have this opportunity. And, and now when you think of Holland, think of tomatoes and think of pavilions. Thank you. <laughs> and they eat like an old-fashioned tomato. This concludes our show on Holland. Thank you to Martin Air, the other Dutch airline. And for reservations, call 1-800-627-8462. And thank you to this week's participants. Golden Tulip Barbizon Center Hotel, Royal Delftware, Grolsch Beer, Vaughn's Pavilions Retailer for Holland's Red Tomatoes, City of Rotterdam, Dooley and River and Canal Cruises, Kerhaas Hotel, and Oscars. Don't forget to book your car rental before you leave. Thrifty will meet you at the airport. Thrifty Car Rental in Amsterdam. For information and your own video copy of this show, contact Rebecca Blackwell. City, a Blackwell Group Production.